what is up welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here then just welcome to my channel go ahead and hit the subscribe button as you will not be disappointed at least i don't think so anyway today's video is going to be another true crime story while i do my makeup right quick before i get started i made a community post the other day saying that i had a new idea for a segment on my channel which i'm so excited about <laughs> i'm filming the first one right now right after this video it'll actually go up before this one but anyway i'm gonna start an advice column kind of segment on my channel where you write in to me i'm going to list the email address below if you have anything that you want my advice on my perspective on my opinion on then just write me an email tell me the tea girl i will keep you anonymous if you want me to as stated in the post i really enjoy you know communicating with y'all talking with y'all engaging with y'all y'all my girls or whatever we friends and you guys really seem to enjoy my commentary so i feel like this will be a great fit for my channel and i'm excited about it like i said so please send your email submissions and i will let you know my thoughts in a video without further ado let's just get into it y'all i have already been drinking while i was going over the notes for this video and child y'all the geese the geese are out so today's video is about the scissor sisters shout out to dawn egan i hope i say your name right she requested this video when i did a quick little look into the story i was like child i just my head hurts that could be a hangover coming in i don't know but whatever so john and kathleen mohall they were a cute little couple living in south dublin over in ireland now together they had a bunch of kids they had three boys three girls and john was reportedly very abusive to kathleen so much so that their marriage just it went to hell fast and in 2002 kathleen left john and she began dating a man by the name of farah nor kathleen actually moved farah into the family home and then john of course he wasn't with that as anybody you know wouldn't be he took some of the children and he left now apparently fair wasn't much better for kathleen than john was because he reportedly allegedly subjected her to regular beatings now a little backstory on farah farah migrated to ireland in december of 1996 when he came to ireland he claimed to be a somali whose family was killed during the somali civil civil what? civil war but it was later revealed that his family wasn't they weren't killed at all as a matter of fact they were very much alive and well he had a whole wife and three children that he had left behind in kenya he wasn't even a somali like i thought it was somalian i don't know but he wasn't from somali he was actually kenyan and like i said he left a whole little family behind in kenya that he had promised that he would come back for these men just they just be doing the most he also had a, a history of being particularly violent towards women that ladies and gentlemen is how you scrape the bottom of the pudding cup aka your foundation when it's almost gone and you just don't want to let go yeah so like i was saying farrah was very violent toward women in 1997 just one year after he touched down in ireland he actually sexually assaulted a mentally disabled 16 year old chinese girl who later gave birth to a son that was his of course Two other women actually had children by him as well. One of them was another 16 year old that he had dated. And both women claimed that the children that they had from him were a result of sexual assault. All these women out here giving away the goods and some people just like to take them. I just will never understand. I guess if you're a sadist so you like the challenge. Farrah was actually convicted on three occasions for sexual assault but he never served any jail time i have got to film today like i have to be filming right now and pretty much for the rest of the day so i can keep you guys content coming so if you hear the geese in the background and if you got on headphones i'm so sorry about it i'm gonna try to film around them but y'all might catch a quack or two if you do i'm so sorry now on top of those convictions he also had some for like regular assault like just being just being violent and abusive it got to the point where the department of justice they decided to just deport him like they were like you know what he came over here cutting up let's just send him home let's just get him out of here yeah get him the hell out of here will you please get him out of here throw him out but in a strange turn of events he actually appealed the deportation request and was granted irish citizenship in march of 99 on the grounds that he had become 
a parent of an Irish born child. It's like y'all not gonna take into consideration how he became that parent of an Irish born child. Like fast forward to 2002, he begins dating our girl Kathleen Mulhall, who is 51 at the time. He is in his late 30s, which will make him a little less than 10 years older than her daughter Linda and about 18 years older than her daughter Charlotte and a bunch of years younger than 51 year old ass Kathleen. Which I found kind of odd because he obviously had that R. Kelly spirit on him because he had, you know, the, the, the Chinese girl was 16 and his, his girlfriend prior to Kathleen was 16 and it's like, sir, what are you doing here? Now, by this time, Kathleen's daughter, Linda, was very troubled. She had dropped out of high school and went on to have four children. And so... Her not having a high school degree kind of made it a little difficult for her to, you know, obtain employment. So at this time, she is unemployed. She's a mother of four. She's addicted to heroin. And she also has a history of alcohol abuse. The father of her children, he was reportedly abusive. And so she ended a relationship with him. But just like Kathleen, she kind of left one abusive relationship for another. The guy that she dated after she left the father of her children, Wayne... <laughs> He was an asshole. He abused her and her children. In one instance, he beat the children with a metal pipe so bad that social services got involved and took her children away like they should. There was an investigation and Wayne actually served six years in prison for the incident. Now, Wayne had a terribly abusive past himself. According to his sister, he was always abusive. He was always very violent even into their childhood. Wayne's sister said that he would abuse members of their family all the time including their parents and had broken her jaw on one occasion. Why are you so angry Wayne? I just... <laughs> In May 1996 Wayne actually received an eight-year prison sentence after he murdered a retired auctioneer while he was visiting his wife's grave site and he only got eight years for that and uh then y'all when he got done with his eight year sentence homeboy ended up back in jail because in 2012 he was jailed for life after he had stabbed to death a 29 year old and left her in the field in a field and now charlotte mahal like her sister she had a very troubled i want to say past but it was a present too. Charlotte also had a history and a present of alcohol and drug abuse. She was also into, you know, into makeup. Today's look is going to be a recreation of one of her looks. <coughs> I better fucking not. I hate me. I swear I hate myself so much. Charlotte also had a minor little criminal record. She was also uh, involved in prostitution which she at some point got Kathleen involved in prostitution. I don't know if they were like advertising that is like the young calf and the old bull i don't know i don't know maybe that's the thing but i'm just like if i'm gonna be a, a, a sex worker i'm not gonna be out there sex working with sharon like i feel like that'll be a little odd but child, i'm not here to judge their lives i'm just here to tell y'all what happened long story short the mohalas were balls deep in dysfunction and violence and abuse and criminal activity child they were just doing all of the above now march 20th 2005 kathleen both her daughters linda and charlotte and her man mr farah they were all out drinking having a good old time and bar hopping now at some point in the evening ecstasy tablets that came into play they said that everybody willingly took ecstasy except for pharaoh who he was drugged one was just dropped in his drink the other ladies had taken three each i ain't never took ecstasy but <laughs> but i heard of people taking like half or one not three to be fair though this is like over the course of a couple hours but still I feel like that's a bit much, but I'm no ecstasy expert. I ain't never taken a drug, so I don't know. Just saying, it sounds like a bit much to me to take three. <laughs> now, once they started taking like the ecstasy and stuff, they're really feeling, they really feeling like they really effed up out here in these streets literally and so they decide let's take the party back to kathleen's apartment and from there their drunken day out turns into something from a horror film like <sighs> girl 
let me tell you. So apparently, allegedly, as the story goes, as told by Kathleen and the crew, they return to the house and then Farrah, he begins filling on Linda, which is the oldest daughter of Kathleen. Y'all know Kathleen, his girlfriend, so I don't know why he's trying to fill up on a child, but apparently that's what happened she's telling him no she's trying to you know fight him off she's refusing his advances she's telling him to back up she's trying to fight him off and he's just persistent he's feeling on her he's whispering nasty perverted things into her ear and she's just like she's not trying to be a part of any of the things right but old Farrah, he is refusing to take no for an answer real quick right quick Somebody left me a comment saying that the key to using metallics that just won't work whether you wet the brush or not is to buy these. These little things that we typically throw away like the little cheap makeup applicators and uh, pick it up and apply with that. And when I say my girl, whoever you are, I cannot remember the name, but you have saved me and honey. When I say you're the reason why half of these eyeshadow palettes have not gone into the trash, it really does work. God bless you, your edges. Whatever you want out of life, be it a fat ass or financial stability. Now back to the story. Kathleen, his girlfriend, she's pissed of course because he's feeling all up on her child. I mean, I'm sure it's bad enough that it's another woman he's feeling all up on in her presence, like the disrespect. But it's her child too, so she gets mad and she starts to yell. Shut the fuck up. Sit the fuck down. Just sit your ass down. Now, Farrah allegedly is not responsive to Kathleen's reaction either. He continues to try to, you know, push up on Linda and then he still doesn't stop. Now, according to Kathleen, at this point, she snaps and says, please just kill him for me. Now, her two daughters, Linda and Charlotte, without question and in unison, they began to both attack Farrah. Charlotte repeatedly began slashing him with a knife and Linda, she begins repeatedly striking him in the head with a hammer. Kathleen watches as her daughters carry out the act, but she at no point physically participates in the act at all. Within a matter of minutes, Farrah is he's dead i love sharon von to death i love my mama but i think if this was going on and she was like just kill him for me i'd be like miss ma'am there's nothing else that i can do uh can we think this over can we can we discuss this in the other room like that's a bit extreme my girl if we're going to entertain their account as the truth which is that there was no premeditation it was just it just happened like Miss Ma'am. Like I jump on his back and bite his fucking ear off. I don't think that's too much to ask. But uh I can't just just kill him right now, ma'am. But I love you. So like I said, it was alleged to be a very sudden and improvised, impromptu attack. No premeditation, no nothing. But oddly, I was about to say, but otter. Otter is a fucking animal. But even more odd than them just springing into action without like feeling like maybe that's a bit much is the fact that afterwards they didn't skip a beat like there was no mama where they're like oh my god what do we just do they kept going with it like they sprang into action and just immediately went into the disposal of the body like the sisters together acted with a very eerie and weird strange kind of automatic action like now immediately after this incident they take him into the bathroom and immediately start to dismember his body like cut him up into tiny pieces now if you got a faint stomach or if you can't hear the details of something being chopped up then my girl this is where you click off or fast forward about 30 seconds First, they cut off his pee pee as a form of punishment for his sexual aggression. They cut the rest of him up into pieces as small as they can get him. Chopping him down took hours to do. They were at this for hours and then they put him into these little plastic bags and they made several trips back and forth to the Royal Canal to dispose of him like y'all just, honey, have y'all done this before? Like this can't be the first one. In an effort to prevent him from being identified, they decide not to throw the head in with the rest of the body. Instead, they take the head with them to a park and then they dig a hole and they bury it. After burying the head, Kathleen takes the knife and the hammer and she tosses it into a nearby pond and they leave the park. A couple days later, Linda returns to the park. She digs up the head and puts it into her kid's backpack. And she transports the head to a field where she takes a hammer, breaks it up 
even more and then buries it again. Now to this day, his head nor his PP have ever been located. Goddamn geese, here they go. 10 days later, Farrah's leg, still wearing a sock, is found floating in the canal. The little water police, I don't know what they're called, y'all. I'm not trying to diminish them, but you know the crew that gets out in the water and scuba dives and stuff. Like the water unit, they go out and they search the lake that, you know, his, his leg was found at. They retrieve most of the rest of his body parts. His torso was still wearing a shirt. And that is actually how they identified him. Like one of his friends identified him by that shirt. And it was only a matter of time before investigators, you know, they're led to the malls as suspects. Cause it's like, this was your boy, Kathleen. Like what's the tea? You ain't reporting him missing. He was last seen with you. What's up? Now the sisters along with both of their parents were arrested. I don't know why they circled around and got John. John was like, hey, I ain't shit to do with this. Now initially the family, they deny any kind of involvement. They're like, we don't know what happened. We had nothing to do with it, right? But then Linda, you know, it's always that one. I say, if you're going to commit a crime, do it by yourself. Linda contacted the police a couple weeks later and she was just like, you know what? Here's what happened. Here's my involvement. She pretty much just spilled all the tea. I don't know if she felt bad. Probably not. She probably got offered a deal. And so she was like, you know what? I got all these kids. I need to think about me. After Linda's confession, Kathleen, she fled the country. She was like, you know what? I'm out. Oh, guess my eyelash just said the same thing. Now she fled the country in September of 2005 and it wasn't until January of 2008 until investigators were able to locate her. Mama was over in England living her best life and they rolled up on her like, Miss Ma'am, is this you? I need you to come with us. Ooh we blew a snoring in the background. I gotta wrap this up. Linda and Charlotte, they were both charged with murder. They both pled not guilty. Their trials took place in October of 2006. Now, Linda's jury, they accepted her defense of provocation. Like she was provoked because he was pushing up on her and she just snapped. And so she was given a 15 year sentence and it was brought down from murder to manslaughter. Between the geese and blue, y'all. I'm so sorry. Now, after Kathleen returned to Ireland, she was charged with two counts of giving false information about Farrah's whereabouts to investigators and also withholding information that she knew or believed would be detrimental to her daughter's trials. She was also charged with impeding an arrest in a murder investigation. She pled guilty to helping clean up the crime scene after the fact and was sentenced to five years in prison in May 2009. She is out child because it's 2020. She is out and about, okay? Now Charlotte, she didn't have a leg to stand on. Mama was charged with murder of Farrah. She received the mandatory life sentence and she ain't never getting out the girl's father john john mohaw he hanged himself in phoenix park when the girls were charged with murder it's like you ain't even waited out to see what was gonna happen i guess he just already knew that they had done it but why would you hang yourself sir why i don't understand he wasn't even believed to be involved in the killings it's like mr why would you do such a thing the girl's brother james mohaw he took in linda's four kids after she went off to jail. Now, Brother James, he had six children of his own. So all together, now he got 10 kids. He ended up in jail himself after he pled guilty to robbing two sex workers because he said he needed the money to feed all the children. Like, mister, why don't you get a job? Now, Sister Linda, she was released in 2018 after serving 12 years of her 15 year sentence. Look at her standing outside the jailhouse looking like she waiting on an Uber or for Kathleen to come pick her up in the same little outfit child that she was, she had to surrender in. I miss. Now, apparently they were dubbed the Scissor Sisters because of the nature of the crime. Now, this is supposed to be a safe place, so I'm going to tell you this in confidence. And I'm going to need y'all not to judge me in the comment section or I ain't going to tell y'all nothing else. I just knew they were called the Scissor Sisters because they was called scissoring or something. The little part of me was like, girl, that's why they called y'all the Scissor Sisters as if I was a little disappointed. I don't know. Anyway, that is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Follow me on my social media. All of it is listed below. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you 
in the next one. Peace.